Hey guys, just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about the tools I'm going to use for Inktober. I know I get a lot of questions um, about like what what tools I use, what pens, um, and stuff like that. So I figured I was I was gonna plan on waiting until um, October to do a little video for you guys. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Inktober is just um, basically an event that was created by Jake Parker, I think in like 2009, which is basically just encouraging people to draw with ink, uh, draw something in ink every day for the entire month of October. And there's really no like themes or rules or anything. If you want to post it online with the hashtag Inktober, then you can do that. So I'm going to start by talking about some of the pens that I use pretty regularly, because this is the stuff I'm going to be using uh, for Inktober. Um, first and foremost is my High Tech C, and this is the High Tech C Mica model. There's a couple different models of this pen. This is the Mica model. Um, the really only difference from the other pens is, is the body. The line weight is the same, um, as long as you're getting the same size. And this is the .04 size, uh, which I think is probably the best all-purpose size. I like the .03 for doing like smaller drawings and really fine detail, and I haven't actually gotten to use the .05 yet, but chances are if I'm drawing, I'm going to be using this. Uh, this is what I use in like the majority of my sketches and stuff. It's just a really, really nice all-purpose pen that feels really great to both draw and write with. So, there's that guy, High Tech C Mica. And um, for those of you watching on YouTube, I will have, uh, I will type out the names of all these pens so you can see them. And my second most commonly used tool is this two millimeter lead holder, and this is just graphite. Uh, I use an H grade. So it's it's kind of a little bit little bit harder, a little bit lighter. I use this for sketching and shading. Um, I tend to like the two millimeter size over other pencils because it's I don't know it's just a little bit bigger. Plus I like having a nice weighty lead holder. And this this lead holder is made by E plus M, which is a German company. I don't know the name of this lead holder. I don't know if it has a name. So I just call it my E plus M lead holder. So for sketching, this is my tool. And coming back to the Hitech C, this is a different model. This is the Hitech C Colito, and this is a multi-pen version of the same thing. As you can see, it has different different colored inserts and works like a multi-pen. You can buy the inserts, and it's basically the same same pen, same pen tip with uh, multi-pen inserts that you can just um, you can kind of pick and choose. And I like using the Hitech C inserts. This is an example of the .03 size too, so it's a little bit. A little bit slimmer, um, but you can buy any combination of the inserts for these, which is really nice. And this one has five slots. Uh, all the colors are really great, and you can also buy like mechanical pencil and eraser inserts for this. So you have a really, really a uh, unique, uh, versatile tool if you get one of these. And they're, the bodies are pretty inexpensive. You just have to buy the, buy the inserts for them. Uh, one of my other favorite inking pens is this guy. This is the carbon desk pen, and this one also has two different models, which are very similar. One of them you can see has the carbon pen engraved in it. The other one does not. One has that gold cap on the end. The other does not, and the caps are a little bit different, but they're pretty much the same pen. Um, I think I think this one, without the gold cap on the end, is just basically an updated version of the same pen. I think this one's a little bit older. Um, but if you look them up, this one is the Carbon Desk Pen DP1000, and this one is just the Carbon Desk Pen. And like I said, I I tried both of them um, just to see if there was any difference, and from what I can tell, there really isn't. So this pen, this is a really nice pen for a fountain pen. Um, it's got a nice, nice scratchy line. I tend to like, you know, nice thin lines. It's really smooth and just feels really good to work with. Um, these have ink cartridges. I fill mine with my own ink, and I'll list the ink in the description as well. Um, but I use a, a Sailor, Sailor fountain pen ink, and that's what I fill all my pens with. I just use a syringe to refill the old cartridges. But the, the ink that comes with these pens is, is actually not half bad. So there's that guy, the carbon dust pen. Uh, let's see, one more that I get a lot of questions about. Um, this is a, a Kuretake... Zig, and 
it's it's basically a writer pen. I think it's meant for like scrapbooking and stuff. But I really like this company, and it's got Lightfast archival archival sorry ink, and uh, two different tip sizes. So this is the .05 tip size. It's got on one end, which is a pretty pretty decent for drawing. I use this for drawing like quicker, larger sketches. And then the other the other side is like a 1.2 millimeter, so it's closer to like a sharpie. Really nice for filling in large areas. And just another like really versatile pen that I like to use. Um, I actually just recently dis discovered this um, from Michaels, and it's not even in the like drawing section, it's in the scrapbooking section. But for a couple bucks, it's a re really nice pen, especially for the high quality archival ink that it has. Um, another guy that I get a lot of questions about and I see a lot of people starting to use more and more the pilot parallel pen this is the 3.8 uh, millimeter size it's got a pretty big chisel tip and the tip is the tip is actually metal as opposed to a lot of like other calligraphy pens that have uh, like a felt tip and this is this is intended as a calligraphy pen uh, and you can see why but it's excellent as a drawing pen because of its ability to lay down these like huge um, th thick or thin lines with just a little bit little little change in the direction of your wrist you can get a lot of different line weights out of this guy it's really fun to use and also if you draw with just the tip of it just the corner you can get a nice like little scratchy thin line out of it um, one thing I had I do have to say about this pen is the stock ink that it comes with is really really awful it smears a ton it's not waterproof at all, and it's kind of just not fun to use. So this guy, while it comes with cartridges that you can refill, um, you can also get a converter that you can use to fill with your own ink. And it's just a piston converter, so you just can stick it right in the bottle and twist it, and it'll suck the ink up through the through the tip. And I believe the converter is, if you look up, since it's a pilot pen, if you look at the pilot CON50 converter, CON50. Uh, that should be the correct converter if you want to get one of those for the, for this pen. And I do have all the sizes. They range from like a 1 point something to like a 5.0, 5 point, 5 which is huge, but really fun pen to use. As you can see. Um, and there's always the good old trusty ballpoint pen. Um, I always keep a ballpoint pen on hand just if I feel like drawing with them. This is just a basic Bic. Nothing special about it. Uh, great great for doing big sketches. Um, great for doing like thumbnails and stuff. Uh, just because there's, ballpoint pens are so uniquely versatile in the sense that they can go from like really light, really thin to really big and really dark. And for doing like doing like sketching and thumbnail work like I said uh, it's a great, great tool to have on hand. Plus, ballpoints are really underestimated for their ability to be, like, completely waterproof. It'll also last you forever if you never use it or uh, don't lose it. Cause, <laughs> like, I'll buy a pack of those pens, like twelve ballpoint pens, and I never actually use any of them to the end. I always just lose them all. But at like two bucks a, two bucks a package, you can't really go wrong. And uh, since you're going to be working in ink, if you're doing Inktober, uh, you can't erase ink, as you may know. So, a uh, correction pen is a good thing to have on hand, and this is a Pentel Presto uh, correction pen. And you can get just like the, I think Bic makes them, just like a whiteout pen. But I like this one, it has a really nice um, fine tip, and it's really easy to get it going, um, which I like. So, if you make a line that you don't like, just make it go away. Just like that. If you're getting into ink, I can't recommend this enough to have one of these. Um, and this is going to be the last one for today. Uh, this is for shading. And like I said, I like to use graphite for shading with pen a lot. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, look for this Pentel color brush. And this is the gray color brush. They make these in a bunch of different colors, but this is, this is the gray one. And that can lay down just some nice, nice gray tones really quickly. So if you're looking to add some some depth to some of your ink drawings really quickly, then get one of these guys. And the 
the reservoir back here, it screws off, but it's actually semi-soft. So if you if these pens start out kind of dry, but they're meant to be kind of customized. So if you want more ink to come out of it, you just give it a couple couple squeezes to the soft body and it'll start flowing with a little bit more ink for you. And if you like to use water brushes, then before it dries, you can use a water brush to kind of spread this out a little bit to get some lighter tones too, because generally it lays down pretty heavy. And if you're looking for a water brush brand that you like, um, Pentel makes them. I like these. These are Derwent, um, but they're pretty much pretty much the same. Derwent may has a couple different sizes, but yeah. So those are all my pens. Those are those are the ones I use like 90% of the time. I have a bunch of other ones. Um, and some fountain pens and stuff. And I'll, I'll do probably a separate thing about fountain pens. Um, just to talk about some of the different styles and stuff eventually. But here's all my stuff I use for Inktober. And like I said, if this is on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be um, all the names of the pens will be in the description. If you if you missed one or weren't, weren't sure about the spelling or anything like that. But um, yeah, I hope you guys participate in Inktober. And you know, more than anything, just experiment with ink and try some different tools and have fun drawing in general. So I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys next time.